Hello, welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Great Wall Hobbies 148 scale. This is the uh, Fokker Wolf FW189A2. Yes, it does look a little bit like a greenhouse uh, with an engines, uh, but again, something really, really nice. And again, recently been looking at Great Wall Hobbies kits quite a lot, and uh, yeah, they do some very nice subjects. So as you can see, nice little bit of box art on the front, um, as I say, showing you all about it. Kit number for this one is L4803. Uh, we've got some nice touches in CAD work on the side. So we can see it looks like we've got a detailed engine. Uh, nice glass work, as you might imagine, on something like this. And also, something we're going to have to look at. It looks like we actually get some access uh, steps and ramps and things like that as well, which is quite a nice touch. Okay, usual things running around the box. Uh, a couple of markings down here. Again, some really nice markings with the winter camo down in there for Ni uh, Russia 1943. Uh, we've got the standard sort of, you know, the green ones in splinter uh, for Russia 1942 as well on there. So, in the box. Have. Okay, so some very nice clear parts. As you imagine, we can take a good proper look at those. Okay, clear parts. So we've got a nice bit of photo etch. We've also got some decals and, of course, the instructions. Okay, right. That's odd. Very old school paper. It's actually yellow compared with the white, as you can probably see on here. Okay, so running around our instructions just like this okay we've got parts call out it's quite old school the way this is it looks like it's like an old photocopy or something else like that um, so yeah but uh, there we are that's so showing down in there a couple of grayed out parts as you might imagine obviously there is a different version of this one out here okay so we are looking for starting with number one because here it's got number seven so that's number five that's number seven, that's number seven, number one. Okay, a little bit weird how all this goes, so we're going to have to work our way through this one. Let's just move that out the way. Okay, so number one is just around in here. So as you might imagine, we're starting down into the actual uh, bowels of the actual aircraft itself. So we're coming in here with the actual cockpit area, a made fuselage interior, so we've got flight yokes, seats, uh, we've got some other areas, well, I'm not actually sure even what that is, to be honest with you. Uh, some bulkheads, rudder pedals, things like that. It is all going to be glass, so you are going to see all of this lot, so it actually is worthwhile detailing it. We've got the sides uh, of the actual um, main fuselage and wing areas going down on here as well for the cockpit. So again, we've got nice details going in there, looks like some radio equipment things like that. Then we're bringing this all together. So we've actually got the situation of having the centre section and these two halves coming around, giving our actual area. And then the underside to the wing set. And again, replacing uh, as is needed or whatever way you're going to do some of the lumps and bumps on this one. Twin guns up at the top for the cockpit for the defensive guns uh, armament on this one right the way through. And then with the glass work, adding the instrument panel into the front of this one uh, and right the way through. Okay. Then we've got the rear gun system as well going into that sort of uh, rear sort of gondola area at the back and those being fitted down in there and then again other glass work and we're assuming uh, these can be displayed open or closed for easy access into the cockpit area and then again more glass work down here at the rear okay then it's over to the engines really nice touch with this one because we have got fully detailed engines very limited in wiring but this is something you come along with definitely with your aftermarket a little bit of uh, lead wiring things like that some copper uh, and just liven it up be absolutely fantastic prop and spinner being fitted to the front then we're into the gear standard type gear system going through opening up some holes uh, for various uh, store elements on the sides, for the actual bomb racks, and then the wing section going on there just like that. Okay, onto the other side as well. So we've actually got the bombs being fitted to the wing sections going in flaps. Obviously, no glue required for the actual aileron set on these, so they are going to be posable right the way through, and then mounting the engine into those uh, wing area nacelles and then obviously with the tail booms being fitted in there as well and then the covers going actually onto the actual engines and then they're opening up and reversing for the other side as you can imagine so straightforward it's going to be seven again that's why i think they're mentioning seven twice okay over on eight so we're going to be putting these together so just bringing them across getting those all fitted down in there as you might imagine we've got some photo etch as well for the gear doors uh are those ones being fitted in there just like that and then that tail one going in and then uh, other plates just for the underside of the engine for a3 being fitted in there just like that 
Okay, and then some flaps, this big flap system down at the back being fitted down into there, sorry, air brake system being fitted down into there. And again, some other little bits of photo etch as well for the latches. And then we've got uh, a couple of others going onto the other side, a couple of little covers going down for the actual leading edge of the wings, uh, the uh, pitot tube being fitted, and then we've got ladders, aerials, and we do get the actual access and uh, boarding ladder being fitted down in there as well. And then the same on the other side, just like that. Again, very nice little touch with this one. So we have the standard German splinter camo. Okay, uh, this obviously this is uh, it's a Russia 1942 type markings. Very nice with the yellow underwings and right the way through. Something nice like that. Or you have the lovely winter camo as well. Something a little bit special with that one. Very nicely done indeed, as you might imagine, right the way through with those. So nice little diagram ones as well for Russia 1942. Okay, so over in here we have, we find our way into it. We've got the decals of which there isn't loads. We've got a lovely bit of photo etch, I'll let me get in here even. Get this photo etch out. Photo etch is ripping. Okay, so on the photo etch, as you can see, very nice detail for the undersides down in here and this bits for the engine we've got the rudder pedals gun sights things like that being fitted in there and obviously the harnesses really very nice and that is very flexible very very thin that's very nice indeed no problem with that at all then we've actually got the decals now i thought originally this was yellowing it does look like there's a yellow hue but it's supposed to be there it's something Actually, I think it's carrier film. The carrier film's actually yellowed. I can see it up here. And then this is not one giant decal. It's actually a small one. It's going to be a pain, I think, to fit that on. It does worry me how this has got yellowing on it already, though. And you might notice, you can see it over here where it says uh, Focke Wolf uh, as well down in there. But obviously just up here for the no-step area. Um, and again, multi-part swap sticker, as you can imagine, on there just like that. Okay, and then some of the other areas looking very nice. But again, just a little concerned about the yellowing there. I would have thought that really we wouldn't have any yellowing uh, on a modern kit just like this, or certainly just off the bat. But generally they look quite nice. They're all in register. Do look a little bit thick as well, but um, anyway, you could always pop down the aftermarket route if you wanted to. Okay, let's have a look at the glass first, purely because it's such a big part of this kit. So, nice separate bag. Okay, and then here we go. So as you can see, wow, lots of it. Uh, various areas. What's lovely about all this glasswork, it's good, clean, sharp edges. So it's gonna be actually quite easy if you buy the mask set, pop the mask set in there and obviously just line that up just like that. Uh, or again, if you're gonna do it yourself, it's gonna be quite easy to get an embossed corners in there with a knife and go around and do it. Even the other ones, the sides, very nice as well. Uh, the defensive gun area at the rear, looking very, very nice. All of these, okay, and that sort of gondola at the back. Considering it's that cone, it's quite a, you know, uh, a sharp and thick molding. That's actually quite clear as well. So you can see, really very, very nice indeed with all of those. So that was always going to be your worry when you're dealing with something like this is that the clear parts are obviously going to stack up and they are going to be okay. But happy to report that we're actually doing okay on those. Okay, into the parts. So, where should we go? Let's start in here. Okay, Great Wall Hobby standard type plastic that they use. It's quite a, a crispy, chinky type plastic. But you can see some nice details right the way down here, all recessed. Um, we've got a little bit of raised where you would expect it uh, for the details around it. But generally really nice. If we have a, a close look, you can see the mouldings and the parts, those engines, those tail booms as they're coming back. Some really nice details on those. No problem with that at all. And then the same... It's like a mirror on these anyway. So very, very nicely done. Some good detail down on there. On the inside, we've got some detail. We have got some little ejector pin marks just in here, but to be honest, you're never gonna see them in there for the actual landing gear. The gear 
doors down in here. Unfortunately, we have got a few little ejector pins in there as well. It'd be nice if we'd avoided those. And if we've even got down on here on the smaller parts as well. So there are a few ejector pins floating around on this, but they shouldn't be too bad. They're quite shallow. Uh, we do have a little bit of flash as well, just down on some of these parts. Okay. So just be mindful when you're putting them together with the construction, how it's going to go together and everything else like that, that you take care of those. Or you just keep an eye out for them and then that way it'd be easier to deal with. So again, wing tops, see, very nice level of detail on those. And we flip down here, we can see all the access ports on the underside. Just looking at it, it looks like there's a sink mark just here, but it's not even anywhere there. I thought that might have been maybe just off the locating tab there. But I don't think it's too much of a problem. Nice detail on the underside panels with those. That's very nice indeed. And as you see, if we walk up, you can see the tops of the wings. Very nice. And we've just got a mirror on that one. And again, just a little bit of tops. And again, we've got a couple of ejector pins in there as well. A little bit unfortunate with that one. Okay, so. Let's go down here. Looks like we have got a crew, and we've actually got the bombardier lying down. I'm assuming that's sort of perhaps he's not. I don't know. Quite see how he's positioned. Cockpit floor. We can see just down on here. Uh, obviously the tail area, tops of the tails, the actual gears, things like that, all on here. Very nice indeed. So if we have a little bit of a run round, you can see we've got those side areas that are going to lead to the wings. And those, we've got the cockpit floor, a little bit of texture of various things down in there. Not too bad, and we haven't got any problems there. We've got some nice rib detail just down in there on that sort of tail plane. And then over here, we've got that back of that pilot figure. And obviously the underside of the actual main fuselage set. And again, all those smaller details looking very, very nice indeed. Tail plane, and obviously the gear swings up through sideways on there again looks like we've got another little sink mark just down in here on this guy here which is actually the back of the headrest which is just here which is a little bit unfortunate okay right the way through so we've got some very nice details just under here and generally no real problems there is a few ejector pins running throughout this entire kit which is a little bit unfortunate uh, in this sort of modern day and age with it uh, but again, you might see this texture we've got just here. I'm just checking it, making sure it's okay, and it is. It's just because it's the underside of the tailwheel uh, bay. But you can see it just there. But actually, I think that would be no problem at all. It's just a texture rather than a sink mark. Okay, details for the engine and for the wheels. Uh, where are we? Where are we in here? There we go. Okay, going to be a match pair for these two. And again, so we've got the engine detail, no problem with that. We've got weight on wheels, which are really nice as well, and some very fine details. So obviously, we've got the weapons load, we've got some checker plate, we've got the prop, and obviously, we've got the actual access uh, boarding ladder for this. Again, really nice touch indeed. Okay, and that all weird spinner cap just there. So having a closer look, you can see some really nice details with the gear, no problems with that at all. We've got no ejector pins in there. A little bit of burring on there, but we're okay. We're pretty flash free on this particular sprue. And again, there's that spinner cap again. Odd design indeed. But there we go. We've got the actual parts for the ramp working our way up. We've got that checker plate. Catch it in the lights. Some really nice checker plate. And that all important engine, which actually looks really very nicely detailed indeed. Again, a little bit of wiring in there. I think you can make that something very, very special. Prop, and of course we've got just down there as well that weight on wheels which are bulged which is a really nice touch as well on that one so yeah very nice indeed and funny enough under here we've got things like here we don't have any ejector pins on that part on the inside the magazines for the guns so no problem there actually some very nice stuff going on in there and there we go we have it a little bit disappointed, we've got a lot of ejector pins in there. I'd like to see those out of the way, but generally some really nice detail. The clear parts, and let's face it, this is what this kit is all about. The FW189 is like a flying greenhouse, uh, and you want that glass to be good, clean, crisp, and sharp. And I'm happy to report from what I can tell, it looks an absolutely gem on that part. So there we go, that is the Great Wall Hobbies 148 scale Fokker Wolf 18982.